Faber-Castell have been making pencils here since 1761. Nine generations of the family have run it. Count Charles von Faber-Castell is the latest. I feel a, a responsibility um, to continue to build on, to contribute in, in the best way possible, to build on, uh, you know, what, what was given and, and, and to pass it on to the next generations. In the factory, history gives way to innovation and automation. Cedar wood plates have grooves cut for the lead. This machine drops the lead in place. Another cedar wood plate then goes on top and the individual pencil emerges. A human eye checks for imperfections. Five or six coats of color are added for that glossy finish and then silver writing is added before distribution to the global market. 500,000 pencils a day from this factory, 2.3 billion a year from nine Faber-Castell factories around the world. It's also one of our concepts to be a companion for life. So you start with your, your wax crayons or with your, your, your coloring pencils uh, and uh, when you're getting older, you're using the products uh, through different phases of your life. Companies like Faber-Castell are quite common in Germany. Big global brands with huge market share and international partnerships, but which have chosen to keep their German roots close to where they first started out, despite the cost of production here being much higher. It's the same 10 kilometers away at rival Stadler. 80% of its output is made in Germany. It's another premium product which justifies more expensive skilled labor. Here, it's fine liner pens. The machine injects the ink and attaches nibs, 5,000 an hour. Next door, more automation assembles and packages packs of 10. Both companies are so-called Mittelstand companies, medium-sized, locally loyal and fiercely independent, a model that has driven the German economy for decades. They are the backbone of the German economy of just considering the numbers, I think 98% of uh, German enterprises are small and medium-sized enterprises. 80% of output of Europe's largest economy is from companies like Faber-Castell and Stadler. Companies that have achieved competitive success in world markets without forgetting where they come from. Simon McGregor with TRT World, Nuremberg in southern Germany. And earlier I spoke to Stadler's CEO, Axel Marx. I began by asking him how the privately owned company is doing in terms of its profits. We are a private company, but there's a speciality uh, with Stadler. Uh, we are owned by a foundation. Um, this is a very uh, special uh, company structure, at least in our uh, industry, in the writing instruments industry. Looking back uh, the last couple of years, we were extraordinarily uh, successful. Indeed, uh, Stadler, uh, which has its origin in the 17th century, had in the last two years the most successful years in the entire history of the company and this was due to uh, a special a special trend uh, which we name adult coloring and this adult coloring trend uh, we consider as an anti-trend and trend against uh, digitalization and this adult coloring uh, boosted uh, sales and profits uh, throughout the last two even three years uh, in our company. Um, what are your main markets? Is it mostly domestic or are, do most of your profits come from overseas? Um, we are a, a heavy export-oriented uh, uh, company, so the German, the German uh, share of our overall turnover um, is, is uh, roughly in between 14 to 15 percent. This means uh, more than 80 percent uh, of our business is outside uh, of our home country, Germany. And if we take it on a global scale, uh, Europe is close to 50 uh, percent, including in Germany and uh, this means uh, the other 50 percent the other half uh, we have outside of uh, Europe uh, more or less uh, in the same uh, split in between the Americas and Asia. I see. Um, the euro has been strengthening quite significantly in recent months. Uh, how concerned are you that if the euro remains strong that that is going to start eating into your profit margins? 
Um, well, as we are decades in the business, uh, we, we um, have quite some experience with the up and downs um, of uh, the currencies uh, in former times uh, with the Deutsche Mark and nowadays with the Euro. Um, there is, um, if we look into, into that question, into that topic, uh, the, the biggest concern right now is the UK um, because of uh, the Brexit um, announcement and uh, the UK is uh, a very important uh, market for Städler. It's definitely uh, amongst uh, the top three uh, markets worldwide uh, for our company and uh, the Brexit decision and in line with that, um, the deterioration Duration um, of the exchange rate. Uh, this is a problem. Um, as long uh, as this is only, let's say, one, two, or three countries, um, uh, this is uh, not a severe problem. Um, if the euro uh, would strengthen further, especially against uh, the dollar and some Asian uh, currencies, then it has a direct impact on profitability of our company um, because we have uh, to see that uh, more. More than 70% of what we manufacture, uh, we manufacture in Germany. We have um, um, some subsidiaries, some production sites uh, outside Germany in Southeast Asia, but the majority of the products um, uh, we manufacture are coming from Germany. Okay, Axel Marx, CEO of Stadler, thank you very much indeed for your time.